As many of you have heard, there are several different paths to creating wealth and becoming financially independent. Today, we'll be discussing the four key areas that I believe if you concentrate on, you'll be able to accomplish great things. And these include number one, make more money. Number two, spend less. Number three, invest prudently. And possibly number four, create something of value. Hey, House Stackers, welcome to episode 37 of the Stacking Houses podcast. And if you're new to the podcast, our mission here is to help working professionals create passive streams of income through real estate investing and help you get ahead through financial literacy. I'm your host, Damon Santa Maria, and my goal for each show is to provide you with some practical and inspiring information so that you can create a solid financial plan for yourself. So to help you on your journey, I want to give you a free copy of my book entitled How to Acquire Your First 10 Investment Properties. And this book is my personal journey going from literally broke to creating a multi-million dollar business. And when I say broke, I mean broke as a joke. I used to have to sell my plasma, you know, blood plasma, just to get some Burger King two whoppers for $3 specials. You know what I'm saying? So get the book and all you have to do is go to stackinghouses.com forward slash book. And while you're there, you can check out our blog as well as a great webinar training where I outline the step-by-step process that I took in order to get started in real estate. So as I mentioned in the introduction, there are four key levers that we can focus in on to help create financial independence and possibly wealth in our lives. And in full disclosure, these four methods were popularized by Scott Trench of Bigger Pockets. Shout out to Scott. I'm a big fan of what he's doing. But uh, I kind of have my own spin on these. And so the first one is to make more money or simply increase your income. So let's take a deeper dive into this first lever since it's the one that we're most familiar with. And when we're little, you know, our parents tell us to do chores to earn money. When we're in our teens, we get our first job and you know, eventually we go on to college, which helps prepare us for our working life. And it seems like that life has prepared us to be these little worker bees that are stuck on a treadmill trying to make more and more money, all with the hopes that someday we'll eventually be able to retire and stop working. Everyone is looking for a raise or promotion to ultimately make more money. And it's almost like society is fixated on this one lever more than anything else. Why is that? Well, I think it boils down to our place in society and our social status. If we make more money, we can attract better partners. We can make our parents proud, our children proud, and we can ultimately earn the respect from our peers. And when I look back at my employee career, I worked really hard to win the game and earn that high six-figure income. But at the end of the day, I'd won the wrong game. And so while I think making more money, especially as an employee, is probably the most prominent of the four levers, now that I'm an, an entrepreneur, I am certainly more interested in the other three. I can always make more money, but can I be a better investor or create something of value to other people? I think sometimes, you know, we're focused on the wrong things, which leads me to the second lever, which is to spend less money. And spending less and being frugal is the least sexy by far of the four levers. You know, no one talks about how cheap they are or you know, clipping coupons to save a couple of bucks at the grocery store. But in reality, this is probably the easiest lever to control with the greatest impact. And for the sake of discussion, I'm talking about consumer spending here. I know some of us have health issues that are well beyond our control. And therefore, you know, it's sometimes difficult to reduce the costs associated with medical bills. But, you know, what about discretionary spending on a credit card? Shopping for clothes and jewelry and other items that do nothing to increase our net worth. And the holidays are a great example of overspending. Every January, I look at our credit card statement with disbelief of the amount of money we spend on stuff. Every year, we see that Christmas and the holiday season has become so over-commercialized 
and we swear that next year will be different, right? But what happens next year? We do it all over again. And the sad thing is, is I think we forget the real purpose behind the season. Irrespective of your religious beliefs, I think that we can all agree that the real reason for the season is to first give thanks for the many blessings that we have, which is obviously the idea behind Thanksgiving. And then we celebrate all of the non-monetary gifts that God has given us. But unfortunately, all that gets lost with Black Friday sales. And I would much rather have taken all that money that we spend and donated it to a worthy cause because in six months from now, half that stuff is going to be sitting in the back of our closets or in the garage waiting for the next garage sale. But this is a very difficult behavior pattern that's so hard to change. And, you know, as such, it's probably the lever that most people will tend to ignore. So the next lever is perhaps my favorite, and that's investing. And for me, investing is the smart man's way of making more money because it's essentially having my money work for me. And if I have a job, I have to work really hard to earn that salary or a dollar per hour. However, investments, more specifically passive investments, make money regardless of how hard I work. And our stock investments were up over 25% last year, which earned us six figures by itself. Now, how hard did I have to work in order to make that six-figure increase? Almost nothing. Sure, I had to be smart enough to save up the money in the first place in order to invest it, and I had to be you know, smart you know, where I put the money, but at the end of the day, the money was working for me. And the same holds true for my real estate portfolio. You know, I saved up enough money for down payment and the closing costs and was really picky in choosing the properties that I acquired, but at the end of the day, the passive income through our real estate investing did all of the work for us. And the great thing about passive investments is that all of the work is front-loaded in the beginning, and then the asset pays you for the rest of your life with very little work. So if this was so easy, why don't more people focus their time and their energy on this lever? Well, I think the first reason is that people tend to overcomplicate it. They think of investing as some incredibly sophisticated vehicle that you need to be an expert in in order to win. I also think that people are afraid of losing money, and with that mindset, it's almost impossible to win. By virtue of being an investor, you're willing to take an educated risk and potentially lose money, all in hopes of getting a return. For many people, they would rather just keep things simple, work their day job, and give their money to someone else to invest for them. And this is why there are so many financial advisors in this country. People are willing to relinquish their control of the money to someone else, and this is when bad things can happen. Because you could be investing with someone that is incompetent or worse yet, a criminal running a scheme. And not to mention many financial advisors take a huge fee to manage your money. And for this reason, I recommend that if you're going to invest in Wall Street related investments, simply buy a no load, low fee fund tied to the S&P 500. It'll perform in tandem with the market and all of your gains will not be eaten up by management fees. Okay, so we've discussed making more money, we've talked about saving more money, as well as investing, and now it's time to talk about creating money. And creating money can take many different forms. For example, I can write a book or create a course and sell it. These are two examples of creating something out of nothing in order to have more income. I hear of people going to the dollar store, scanning items to see how much they're currently selling for on Amazon, and then they keep the spread. This too is a form of creating. Also, in real estate, I can refinance my property, I can pull equity out, and I can go and use this to make even more money. In essence, money was created seemingly out of nothing. Sometimes creating money allows you to do just that, be creative. And as a real estate investor, I need to be really creative on how I structure and finance my deals. For example, I can obtain an interest-only loan on a rehab property, giving me much less expense on the front end, which allows me to use my budget for the rehab itself. And that's why they call this creative financing. So in the end, these are the four levers of creating wealth. Perhaps you're really good at one or two or all four of them. 
but I challenge you to get better at the ones you're not as good with. So I hope this has been helpful, and I would also uh, be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And, uh, you know, how can I help you accomplish some of the goals that you have for 2022? I would love to hear uh, them. So hit me up at damon at stackinghouses.com. And hopefully if you're seriously considering investing in yourself and becoming a professional, I highly encourage you to sign up for Stacking Houses Academy where you can learn the step-by-step process that Jim and I took to grow our multi-million dollar businesses. So check that out at stackinghouses.com. And if you liked what you heard today, I would appreciate a like, a share, or a review on the platform that you're listening on. And do me a favor. Please share this episode or any previous other episodes with your friends and your family. Hopefully, I can help them as well. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I want to give you a free copy of my book entitled How to Acquire Your First 10 Investment Properties. All you have to do is go to stackinghouses.com forward slash book. And you can download it for free. And this is this book, as I mentioned before, is a personal journey from me literally going from broke to creating my multi-million dollar business. So be sure to check that out. And until next time, this is Damon with StackingHouses.com. And happy investing, my friends.